to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 and 11. We welcome you today to our study of Soldiers of Christ Arise. Thinking about the idea of being a good soldier in the Lord's army and living every day in command of Jesus Christ and his teaching. And so we're so glad that you joined us for our study today. As always, we want you to locate your Bible and have it handy. If you don't have your Bible, take just a moment to locate it and have it ready as we're going to look to the Word of God together. Today we're thinking about the idea of being a good soldier in the Lord's army and what that means. And as always, our broadcast is brought to you by individual Christians and congregations of the Lord's Church. The Lord's Church in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. Uh, you'll find people there who love God, who are concerned about uh, people and, and souls, and who want nothing more than to simply do what the Word of God says. And so please check out the Church of Christ in your area. You won't be disappointed that you did. Also, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your journey to know God and His Word better. You can check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access a wide variety of good Bible study materials. Uh, we have audio lessons, video lessons, a lot of good written material available. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our previous over 500 videos that we have, if you'd like to have a copy of any of those, you can contact us by going to our website, clicking on a free media request form. You can fill that out, and we'd be happy to send the media to you free of charge in the venue that would help you the best. Also, don't forget about the Gospel of Christ app, Facebook page. Be glad to visit both of those. A lot of good tools you can use. And be sure and like us on Facebook as well. Today we're thinking about the picture of soldiers being a soldier of Jesus Christ. One of the most powerful pictures we see of the church and scripture is the army of the Lord. Put on, Paul said the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 12. And friend, it is the case that Christians are in a battle against Satan, against sin, and the spiritual host of wickedness every day. Paul would say in 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 through 5, that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the spiritual host of wickedness, we are to arm ourselves to do battle every day and to be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And my friend, it is the kingdom of Christ, not of this world, that God's soldiers were involved in a, a battle as soldiers in the Lord's army. Jesus said, if my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight. We're, we're not fighting a, a physical, earthly, geographical battle. We're fighting a battle against the spiritual host of wickedness, evil, sin, and Satan. And this is indeed the most important battle ever because the stakes are so high. It is a battle for our eternal souls. Be sober. Peter would say, be vigilant for your adversary. The devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Men and women's souls hang in the balance and us doing battle correctly can be a very good thing to help uh, people overcome and ourselves overcome these types of problems. So let's think today about being a good soldier of the Lord. What's this army like? What's a soldier like? How can we improve our service for the Lord? What is the nature of the Lord's army like? 
Friend, it's not a forced army. Being a soldier in the Lord's army is a voluntary service. It's a voluntary army. Psalm 110 verse 3, God says, My people shall be volunteers in the day of my glory. Matthew 11 verse 28, Jesus said, You come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden. Revelation 22 17, Let whosoever will come take of the water of life. And again, throughout the Bible, we see this as the idea that God is going to take care of his children and that we must follow him faithfully. You see, in Christianity, we're free moral agents. We have the right to choose to do God's will or to not do God's will. Um, think about Joshua 24, 15. Choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Romans 6, 17, the Bible says, God be thanked that though you were the slaves of sin, Yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered, and having been set free from sin, we became slaves of righteousness. And so we're, we're servants. We, we freely give ourselves to the cause of God and the cause of Christ. Isaiah 6 verse 8, God, the, the, the cry went out, and Isaiah said, Here am I, send me. Nobody was ever forced to do that. They volunteered to do that. Now think about it this way. Gideon reduced from 32,000. His forces were reduced from 32,000 to 300 who were volunteers who really wanted to be there. And with those people who really wanted to be there, they were victorious. Kind of reminds me of what the Italian general Garibaldi said. He said this, I offer you hunger, thirst, cold, no pay, no barracks, no rations, force marches, bayonet charges, battles, death. Whoever loves Italy in his heart and not with his lips only, let him follow me. We leave from the Lateran Gate. That day, 4,000 people volunteered to follow him in that battle. Friend, the Lord's army is a voluntary army. We realize the stakes, we love the commander, and we're going to do what God wants us to do. But you know, when you think about the nature of the Lord's army, it has a perfect commander. Hebrews 10 verse 10, we see Jesus made a little lower the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God might taste death for every man. He's the captain or the commander of our salvation. He's the trailblazer, as it were. You know, part of, part of being a soldier in the Lord's army means that we follow that perfect commander and we trust him no matter what faces us. We're willing to follow that every day. And we can do that because we can relate to him. Hebrews 4.15, he was tempted in all points as we are, yet without sin. Holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners has become higher than the heavens. He's able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25 and 26. This is why we're willing to follow Jesus because he's been where we've been. We can put our footsteps in his footsteps and follow his example because he's been there and he's blazed the trail. He's gone ahead of us. He's cut the trail, cut the path, and we know it's the best way to go. And thus, we're happy to be ambassadors of the king and the Lord's army always doing what he says out of love and devotion to him. Paul said, imitate me as I also imitate Christ. And we're following Jesus just like Paul did every day of our life. But it's because of his love and devotion that we do that. How could you not follow a, a commander who did so much for you? John 3, 16, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. While we were still without strength in due time, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. What do you mean? For scarcely for a righteous man one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Look at that love. 
Look at that devotion. That makes you want to say, if any man desires to come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross daily and follow me. Be faithful unto death in, in the Lord's army. It's a voluntary army where we are following the perfect commander and trailblazer out of love and devotion. I want you to hear what the great general Napoleon said about Jesus. Napoleon said, we rested the creation of our genius on force. That is, they forced people to go to battle and do war. This man, he said of Jesus, has builded an empire on love, and at this moment, millions would die for him. Friend, isn't that a great compliment to Christianity? Well, what else do we know about the nature of the Lord's army? It only has one weapon, Ephesians 6:17. Take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That Word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the vision of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It's a discerner of the thoughts and, and intents of the heart. We do battle today with the Word of God, which is powerful, changes lives and changes hearts in every way. The gospel is God's power to save people's lives today. We speak the truth in love. That word of God discerns the thoughts and intents of the heart, pierces to the spirit and soul, separates good and evil, and puts to death sin, unrighteousness, and ungodliness in a man's life. We wield it out of love as we speak that truth in love. There are no paid leaves in this army. One of the things about being in the military is every so often you get a paid leave, you get to go home, visit your family, take time off from that, and that's all good and well, and rightfully so. But there's no retirement, there's no paid leave. You don't get to just quit in the Lord's army. Acts 2 verse 42, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, and in prayer. Jesus said, he who endures to the end shall be saved, Matthew 24. Uh, we're taught throughout the Bible, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And thus, as Christians, we don't give up. We remain faithful unto death. Revelation 2, verse 10, we realize that the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the good and the evil and that God knows and God sees and God's not going to be mocked. Whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. Galatians chapter 6, verse number 9. But my friend, consider this also about the nature of the Lord's army. We have by far the most dangerous opponent in all the world, Satan angel of light as his ministers, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3, that old wily serpent from the garden who tempted Adam and Eve in Genesis 3 and brought sin and death into the world, that one who is described like that great dragon of old in Revelation 12, verse 9, and of course, how can we not think about the image of 1 Peter 5, 8? Be sober, be on guard. For your adversary, the devil, what's he like? He walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Can you imagine if you were out in the bush and just across the way, you heard the lion roar and you knew he was out in the wild and he could get you? Boy, you'd be on guard. You'd be alert. You'd be watchful. You'd do whatever it took to make sure that lion didn't get you. Friend, that's the image of 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 8. He is a wily individual. 1 Timothy 3, verse 7. He's wicked. He is a murderer and a liar from the beginning. John chapter 8, he brought heartache and havoc and problems into Job's life. He, he worked on Judas's heart in John chapter 7 and 11. He, he, he worked on Peter in Matthew 26 and 27. And friend, he's trying to do the same thing to each one of us. This is why we've got to arm ourselves in the battle against Satan. Now, as we think about not only the nature of the Lord's army, let's also think about what it means. What, what, is, what are the qualities and characteristics of a, a good fighter 
or a good soldier in the Lord's army? Well, first, that, that soldier, that one who's ready to fight, has got to be well-managed and under the control of Jesus Christ. Listen to Romans chapter 6, verse number 16. The Bible says, Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one's slaves whom you obey? whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. If I present myself to obey Jesus and I do that, then, friend, I can be a good, well-managed, and uh, well-ordered servant in the cause of Christ. I can, I can be ready to do what God wants me to do in each and every way. But the question is, have I really submitted myself to the Lordship of Jesus? Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. He who humbles himself will be exalted. Luke 14, 11, 1 Peter 5, verses 6 through 8. Then a good soldier must train diligently. Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2 paints a picture of this for us. The Hebrew writer in picture envisions all those saints in Hebrews 11 who are in that great hall of faith there. And he envisions all those people are sitting in the grandstands, and they are there cheering us on. And he says this, Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily ensnare us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Friend, you've got to stay the course. You've got to train fervently. You've got to be not only ready to run, but you've got to run it. You've got to fight it. You've got to be ready every day. 1 Corinthians 9, 27, Paul said, here's the image Paul had of fighting that fight, training diligently. I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I've preached to others, I myself shall become a castaway. Um, 2 Timothy chapter 2, a good soldier in the army doesn't get caught up in the affairs of the world. And that's the idea. We're training as a good soldier every day. But you know that good soldier also has to build up endurance, grow, continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. You, you've got to work yourself every day to a more uh, endure, a better part of endurance so that you can live faithful to the Lord and not give in to the temptations that come along the way. I'm reminded of what a fighter once said. Jack Dempsey was his name. He said this. He said, a champion is someone who gets up when he can't. That's the idea. You've got to build that endurance up. You may get knocked down. Sin may get in the way at times. You may get in your own way at times. But someone who finishes the race gets up even when he thinks he can't. Don't give up. Don't give in. Be faithful unto death is the idea. But then what else do we know about a good soldier? A good soldier develops a good offense. 2 Timothy 4, verses 6 through 8. I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. You've got to have a good offense. You've got to fight the fight every day. You, what you've done, won't, what, what we've done in the past won't save us. We've got to keep doing what God wants us to do. Stay the course and keep going forward and, and develop a, a plan every day. Resist temptation. Resist him steadfast in the faith, the Bible would say. 1 Peter 5, verses 7 through 9. Contend earnestly for the faith and avoid sin at all cost is the idea. I like what Muhammad Ali said about developing an offense and having a plan to beat the enemy. Although a great fighter, Muhammad Ali said this. He said, I'll beat him so bad he'll need a shoehorn to put his hat on. Well, friend, that's kind of what you'd like to think about a person who's having that I'm going to do it attitude. I'm going to have an offense. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to do my best every day to win the battle with God's help against Satan. And then, of course, you need to use the things that God gives you to help you in this life. Uh, utilize the power of prayer. Be faithful unto death is a, a key idea, but, friend, we, we also can overcome with prayer. The Bible says, let us come boldly to the throne of grace 
that we might find grace and mercy to help in our time of need. We need to utilize the Word of God in everything we say and do to overcome sin and temptation and, and everything that exists. And so you got to strengthen your defenses. Think about what some of those things God has given us are. When you think about strengthening the things you have to defend yourself, the Bible tells us to put on the, the breastplate of righteousness. Trying to live a good right, life every day according to God's will, that gives us a sense of, of protection from evil. As we add the fruits of the Spirit and as we work to get rid of the works of the flesh, we get those things out of our life. Along with prayer, we have the example of Jesus every day that we can follow, who committed no sin, nor was guile or deceit found in his mouth. We have the, we have the encouragement of other Christians along the way. Encourage one another daily. The Bible says, don't give up and encourage each other as you have an opportunity. Um, Luke 22, verse 31, Jesus said to Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you that he may divide, uh, sift you as wheat, but I've prayed for you. Pray for one another. Stay in. If you want to have a good defense, here it is. Stay connected to the Word of God. The Word of God is living and powerful. When Jesus was tempted by the devil, three times he said in Matthew 4, it is written, it is written, it is written. He used the word of God in that battle against Satan. And that's what the Bible teaches us we ought to do, right? Psalm 119 verses 10 through 12, you remember it. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. My friend, here's another encouragement to be a good soldier of the Lord. Realize that there are going to be challenges and difficulties that come along the way and don't let those knock you down. There, there are going to be days, there are going to be challenges, there's going to be difficulties. James 1 verses 2 and 3. James says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Trials, difficulties, and challenges may come. But let those help motivate us not to look at the world on this side, but to focus on the other side. You see, no temptation, the Bible says, has overtaken you except such as is common to men. But God is faithful, who with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you can overcome that or that we can deal with it. And so have a fight to win attitude. Let God help you with that. I mean, uh, uh, think about the mindset again of the Apostle Paul. I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I've kept the faith. Henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, but not to me only, but to all those who've loved his appearing. What's the army of the Lord like? It's a serious deal. It's a battle every day. It's something that it's a joy and a privilege to be a part of. But to be a good soldier, we've got to put these principles into practice in our lives every day. And so, friend, we ask you today, are you fighting the good fight of faith? Are you living faithful? Here, here, here's the problem sometimes. Sometimes there are people who are in the Lord's army who are just kind of AWOL. They may have signed up a long time ago. They may have made a commitment then, but who knows what happened to them and who knows where they went ever since then. Friend, that won't cut it. You, you can't be a good soldier in the Lord's army and not faithfully serve him every day. How are we serving God? Are we giving it our best every day? Friend, just think about this. How much did Jesus give for me and you? How much did he commit so that we could have the hope and joy of eternal life? Well, you remember these words. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that we through his poverty, might be made rich. 2 Corinthians 8, verse 9. He left the beauty and the splendor of that place called heaven. He came to this earth. And how was he treated? 
didn't even have a place to lay his head, born in a, a, a manger. Uh, some of, the, of his own would say he had Beelzebub. Uh, they laughed at him. They mocked him. Uh, when they weren't trying to take him by force and make him do something he didn't, wasn't ready to do, Jesus was often mistreated and dealt with harshly. And then on top of all that, for doing good, for helping people, for healing the sick, for teaching God's law, they crucified him. They, they beat him. They spit upon him. They mocked him. They nailed him to a cruel cross. And he was taken to that hill called Golgotha, Calvary. And there he hung in agony till he died for each one of us. Friend, that's what, that's what motivates. And that's what challenges us to be a good soldier of Christ. When we say soldiers of Christ arise, that's the motivation. And we need to arise every day to live in such a way that will bring honor and glory to God. And so we ask you, are you in the Lord's army? Have you volunteered for service to follow the one who loved you so much? Have you truly given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ? If you haven't, why not do that today? We beg you to become a Christian. Believe Jesus is the Son of God. John chapter 8, verse number 24. Jesus said, unless you believe that I'm He, you'll surely die in your sins. Having believed in Christ, would you turn from sin and repentance? Luke 13, 3, Jesus said, unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Would you confess the name of Jesus before men? With the heart, one believes unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And my friend, would you, to get in the Lord's army, be immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins? Jesus said, he that believes and is baptized will be saved. We're so glad that you've joined us for our study today. And we want to encourage you to join us next time as we're going to study more from the gospel of Jesus Christ. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. The gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 844- Six Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.